in today's video we are going to be breeding some tiger barbs. Now you can see here in this tank we have quite a large school of these tiger barbs. I've actually got three different types in here. I've got green tiger barbs, I've got the standards and I've got albinos. There's a really cool variation of fish in here and in today's video we're going to be crossbreeding all three different types and seeing what we get. So I haven't actually bred these guys before. From everything that I've researched it's very very similar to breeding like Danios and I've been keeping these guys together so I haven't separated males and females and to be honest I don't really care about the males and females with the sexing. If you were going to do this I'd just pick out a big school of like 15 and you're pretty much guaranteed to have males and females. I can see that some of them are more plump than others so that suggests that they are females. I've had them for about a month and I've been feeding them heavily on live blackworms and they've really plumped up. So they're in this big four foot tank. There's no jarve moss or anything in here for them to spawn on. They might be spawning, but I highly doubt it. And in today's video, we're gonna be using the same method that we used to breed the Danios to breed these guys. So what we're gonna do is it's currently the afternoon. I'm gonna take these guys out, introduce them into a spawning tank inside of a styrofoam tub. Tomorrow morning, they hopefully should spawn when the lights come back on in the fish room and we should have a ton of eggs. So let's go ahead and catch these guys out and have a look at the different variants. Is it not going to be easy to catch out? Okay, so I've caught all the barbs out and we can start to have a look at the different types. So here, we'll start off with this group. So right here, these ones are tiger barbs. They've obviously got a tiger pattern. These guys are probably, honestly, the third favorite out of these three types. So these are probably my least favorite. They're a little bit more boring, but they still look really cool. Looking at them, I think I can see some females with eggs, especially when the light's shining through them. And I think there's also definitely a few males. For some reason, they want to swim that way. You can have a real good look there, yeah. They are beautiful fish. So these are the tigers. Cute little fish. Okay, so the next group is going to be four albinos. There's actually still one in the tank that I've got to catch out. But these are the albino tigers. They look really, really cool. Looking at them, they look like they're probably all male. They don't seem too plump. So these would probably be most likely be all males. They're just genuinely tiger barbs, but whiter. They don't have red eyes. So maybe, I don't know what the deal is. Maybe they're not albino. I'm not too sure. Anyways, these are the albino tiger barbs. And then finally, my favorites, green tiger barbs. Look at how cool these guys look. They're like little green piranhas. So here, there's definitely males and females. We've got big fatty girls up here. I think these are girls. And then some skinnier boys. These are a really, really cool fish. Yeah, so we're gonna be crossing obviously all three different types today and trying to see what fry we end up with. So today we're gonna to be using a really simple setup. We've got the old faithful Danio breeding box. So here we have a styrofoam container. This must be about seven or eight liters of water, I'm not too sure. We've got the breeding basket here. So this is used for ponds. I think they're used for like holding lilies. I'm not too sure. And then we've got the cocoa pea. So the way I'm gonna set it up is I put nails in the side of this box. I've shown how I set this up before. Just put nails in here or screws, I should say. What we're gonna do is put our cocoa pea in this box and suspend this as so, like this. So it's not gonna go anywhere now. I'm gonna fill up the container about this far. I'm gonna go ahead and secure this box in place with a rock just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere and spread out the cocoa peat in a corner. And then simply, I'm just gonna go ahead and add all these fish. So we got our tigers, in they go. The green tiger barbs and the albino tiger barbs. Now these guys will jump out of here. So to cover them up, I'm just gonna put these two lids over the top and this should stop them from jumping too much. Hopefully tomorrow, these guys will spawn when all the lights in the fish room come back on. You're probably wondering, this is probably too small of a container for this amount of fish and you'd be right in saying that. But these guys are gonna be in here for 15 hours max and it really won't bother them. I could add an air stone for aeration, but there's plenty of water in here and that's probably not gonna become a problem. So we'll leave these guys in here and see how it goes. Okay, so it's now the next morning and we're gonna have a look and see if our tiger barbs have bred. So what I'm gonna do is 
take this cocoa peat out and I'm going to just simply lift this basket out and move the fish to another tank. Okay, so I've just had a look and I don't think there's any eggs in here. I'm going to leave the water for a couple of days and see if anything turns up, but I can't see any eggs so far. I'm just going to try and do this again in a few more days. I'll just keep repeating the process until we finally do get some eggs. This is part of fish breeding, it doesn't work every time, and you've got to keep going and going and going until you finally get results. So don't give up if this happens, this is pretty normal, and we'll see if we can get some eggs in a few more days. So over the next few days, I did monitor the tub to see whether we started to get any wriggles or anything like that. And as I expected, we didn't. And this is the first time I've tried breeding tiger barbs before. And when I start breeding something new, I normally go for the easiest method, which was to obviously add all the fish to try and get the most eggs possible. And I just went following along with the strategy that I use for my Danios, and obviously that wasn't gonna work. So when these kinds of things happen, I really try to figure out a new strategy to try and get the fish to breed. So I did a few tests and I figured out a bunch of things in the fish room really quickly. So it's just turned winter here in Australia. I didn't realize how much the temperature in the room had dropped, but a lot of the bottom tanks that don't get a lot of the heat because the hot air rises in the fish room had dropped quite a few degrees and all the fish and everything was fine because all the fish that I have in the bottom rack doesn't really require hot water, but I didn't notice how cold some of these tubs that I have on the floor were. I tested the water and it was at 21 degrees Celsius, which was way too cold to breed these guys, but ideally these guys need to be bred at 24 to 25 degrees Celsius. The second thing I noticed was I did a bit more research and spoke to a few more people and I didn't realize how aggressive male tiger barbs are. I knew they were aggressive, but I didn't really think of this being a problem with their breeding. But what happens is male tiger barbs really need to be separated from each other before they breed, because otherwise they just continue to spar and bicker and they never really focus on breeding. So ideally you need to have one male tiger barb with one or two females. So I decided to take all the fish out obviously and reset the tub back up the exact same way. I added a heater this time and I introduced a trio of tiger barbs. In the trio, I added one of each type, so a green, an albino, and a common, with one male and two females. It was a little bit tricky to pick these guys out, but the male, in my opinion, is the green tiger barb, and then the females are the common and the albinos. This was a little bit tricky to do because these guys aren't fully mature yet. They're sexually mature, but they haven't got all their adult colors yet, and it's a little bit hard to sex them by color, so I went by shape. You can see the green tiger barb is definitely a lot slimmer than the other two, and has a bit more of a narrow body compared to the other two. So I left these guys for the afternoon and came back in the morning to see what would happen. Okay, so I came back the following morning, took the lids off the container and checked on our tiger barbs. I decided that I was just going to remove everything from the breeding compartment and then remove the fish and have a look down below and see if there was any eggs. After I'd removed the barbs, I had a really close look down the bottom of the styrofoam container to see if I could find any eggs and I actually did end up finding a few eggs. Now whether these were fertile or not was a complete guess to me, I had no clue. I was actually leaning towards them not being fertile, but I returned them back to the container and left them for a couple days to see if they'd start to hatch. I then continued to monitor the container over the coming days to see whether I started to see any wrigglers or anything else going on in the styrofoam container. But I came back about three days after the eggs had been laid to come and reset the container up to try and spawn them again. And while I was looking in the container, I actually saw fry. So this was a complete surprise to me and I did not expect to see any fry in here at all. I think I counted up about five of them, which is definitely not a lot. And I'm probably gonna try and do this again to try and get some more fry because this is just definitely not enough. But I had a really close up look at them and these fry are insanely fast. They are exactly like their parents and they're super darty and super energetic and they're quite different to some of the other fry that I've bred before. So they're very confident swimmers they seriously do dart around quite a lot and they're still very small but they're quite big compared to some of the other egg laying species that I produce. When compared to things like Danios, they're actually quite a bit bigger and they can take bigger food straight away. So I added a little bit of Java moss to the container which I always do when I'm breeding fish just to give them a little bit of space to swim around and the Java moss will be home to a lot of microorganisms these guys can eat and it just helps to keep the box cycled and acts as a little bit of filtration within the box. After this, I decided that I was going to feed them some microworms. I've talked about these before on my channel. You guys can go and figure out how to do this yourself, but I culture up lots of microworms in the fish room just to feed to small fry like this. 
and I just went ahead with my finger, took a little dab of it, and put it in the water, and they all started to eat it. So after this, I just left them to continue to grow, and we'll come and check on these guys within another day. So it's now been another three days, and we're back with our tiger barbs. And if you have a look inside of the container, you can see that we have a few little fry swimming around. So I took a few of these guys out and had a look at them, and interestingly enough, you can see the common tiger barbs and the albinos. So we have a mix of those two. I don't know whether there's any green ones in there. There might be a few that look like tiger barbs, but there's definitely albinos and commons. And these have all been eating baby brine shrimp. I didn't feed them micro worms past day one. They went straight on to baby brine shrimp and it's made them super easy to raise up. So these guys are almost ready to come out of this container, but there's only about 10 of them in there. I'd say 10 max. There's honestly probably less than that. This kind of is a little bit disappointing, but I'm just putting this down to the fish being too young to properly breed and to even get some fry is kind of a little bit of a success. I probably would need to leave these fish for another few months before I could expect really, really good results. But to get a small range of really cute little tiny tiger bar fry is still really good. So I'm going to wrap the video up here. Thank you so much for watching it, guys. I really do appreciate it. Like I said, if you had some better brood stock, you'd probably have heaps more success than I did. But it's good to see that the method does work. And I'm really, really happy that we did end up getting a couple of little babies. So thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.